Media Security Things World USA. I'm here with Mark from Asa Rabloy. Hi, Mark. Hello, how are you doing? Thanks for taking your time to do this interview with us. My pleasure. Um, could you just introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your professional background? Sure. Uh, I've been in IT for, for three, plus, uh, three, three plus decades, um, and I've been doing security for the past uh, 15 years. I teach at the University of that. I'm head of our InfraGuard chapter in Connecticut and been on the CISO for Oslo Ablo Americas. We're a global company, but I'm responsible for all the security for North, South, and Central America. Okay. What are some of the security challenges you are currently facing and how are you overcoming these? We are a company that supplies locks for the White House and the Pentagon and uh, most of your colleges that in the United States use our locks to uh, secure the door rooms. Uh, and we have the, uh, they're all internet capable, so they can be controlled by us or the company you know, f from any remote location to that uh, building. So if they uh, get uh, a deficiency or a, a break-in, it's going to look bad for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you think organizations will tackle security challenges in the, over in the next few years? The same way they've done all of them. They've, uh, you know, the the uh, IoT uh, area has been, is difficult, but we had these same things when we went to client server from mainframes. Uh, it was a big presentation. Everybody was worried about the... Uh, uh, the vulnerabilities that would be exposed. So vendors started working, understanding that, working with business. The same thing three years ago when mobile phones started becoming the way to connect to all your applications through banking and uh, industry. And uh, at first they were very insecure, but now uh, that model's maturing. The vendors have products out there now that help you, companies like us, protect our, our phones and our, our tablets from uh, some break-ins. So that evolution will continue with the next uh, wave that's coming through. Okay. Tomorrow you'll be presenting a case study called Can We Tra Manage the Threats or Should We Be Frightened? Can you give us a few insights about what you will discuss? We'll talk about the sheer numbers. Uh, everybody's has seen them, they're frightening at the number of devices they predict that will be out there by 2020, how much money IT will have to spend to start protecting those, uh, and then the actual products themselves are mini operating systems that to fix them you have to do firmwares. So the vulnerability management that you've been doing for years is not going to work. It's going to have to be a a new way of doing that. So they answer the question, can we manage them? We really have no choice because if you know the consumer says, this is what I want. I want, I want convenience. I want to unlock my door from my phone if I need to or open my garage door. So they're driving. If your company just says, we're not going to get in there, you're going to go out of business. So we have no choice. We have to manage it. And uh, again, industry will work together and find a way they always do. Okay. What are your impressions of the event so far and what are you most looking forward to? Looking forward to the group uh, uh, roundtables and discussions that we're going to have uh, with uh, your colleagues, peers, because uh, that's where you learn most of the stuff. You hear what people are going through, what they've experienced, and how that is similar to what you are, and how maybe you can shed some light and say, yeah, we did that, here's how we did it. I found two vendors that I've used for my products at uh, last year's one that I've been using since I talked, uh, spoke with them, met them here at this uh, conference that we had in San Diego last year. Okay, um, so thanks for answering our questions and enjoy the rest of the event. I think I will. Take care.